Oopsie. So we have Southwest Airlines. They had a historic meltdown. Thousands of flights were canceled. Passengers were stranded. Really what's happening? There's a lot of um, things circulating of why this happened. Some say maybe it's um, FAA. Some say it's the pilots. Some say just mishandling. Some say the systems couldn't handle it. Um, I think it much, it's much deeper than that, you all. I really do. And um, does it have something to do? Can we tie 1947 in with that? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Can we tie 1947 in with this whole entire scenario that has happened and people are stranded? Some, some probably won't even get out. I hope they get out before the um, end of the year because it disrupted a lot of people's plans. It disrupted their lives. Um, and some of these people had families, they had health conditions, they lost money, they couldn't get hotels, just one airline, just one airline like this. It's, it really is an unprecedented thing, if you think about it. And you know that we've heard that there's been lack of pilot, pilots in a lot of these places, a lot of these airlines. But I want to go over here, I really do, let me... Um, come over to this right here. Good morning, everyone. Um, greetings. Greetings. This is why you won't fly, East Coast Temple. Yeah. Um, the Matrix. Good morning. Um, let's just look at some of these headlines, you all. Let's just look at this because it was, it's kind of wild. Look, Southwest Airlines typically referred to as Southwest, is one of the major airlines of the United States and the world's largest low-cost carrier. It's headquartered in Dallas, Texas, and has scheduled service to 121 destinations in the United States and 10 additional countries. Uh, founded in March 15th of 1967 as Air Southwest. So we've got that. Let's move that on over, you all. This is, um, let, let's see if we can see some, let's see if we can see some whatever. Look at this. Southwest Airline aims to, aims for Friday return after, to normal cancellation. Okay, after they did all of that, you all. Uh, look at that. Cancellation crisis. Uh, it was a crisis. It was. Um, if Thursday is the last day of Southwest crisis, it will be marked by about 2,350 canceled flights, nearly 60% of the airline schedule. You know, it's probably even more than that. Just think, people were standing in line. The lines were wrapped all around. Um, they had the news people there. They had it all going on, you all. Listen to this. We're going to look at some of these scenarios they got going on. Uh, Chris Johnson, Southwest Vice President, for ground operations, um, wrote in the memo that due to workers calling in sick or taking personal days at Denver Airport, the airline was anticipating a state of operational emergency. I've not heard that before. A state of operational emergency because of an unusually high number of absences. You all, I can see right now where this is going. Can you see where this is going right now, you all? Just, th just think about that. Think of the age in which we live. Just think about it. We've got Southwest Airlines. They're having a state of emergency. They don't got enough people. They don't got enough people. What do you do when you don't got enough human beings? Okay, really, what do you do? What is being done? What, what, what is this? What... Um, Oh, great, dear goodness, you are. You know what you do if there's not enough people, human beings. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Lou Shiley. Well, they Southwest Airlines was thrust into the spotlight is what it was. Um, <laughs> AZ Angle. Angel, you call Elon Musk, uh, Marie McDonald. Um, 
1111 Southwest South Wars. Tammy Metals, you go out of business. You know, they, they were calling. But did they call on Elon Musk? Somebody said something, a joke or something about what Elon Musk to bail them out or something. Maybe it was some kind of car company or something. Um, yeah, good morning, you all. So what do you do, really, if you think about it? What do you do when you don't have enough? Surely somebody's got the answer, the same answer that I've got in my head. Who's got the same answer in their head, if you're thinking outside the box, in all honesty? What do you do when, let me come over here, when you, Tammy, honey, thank you, you have an unusually high number of absences, workers calling in sick, taking time, um, and you call a state of operational emergency. Yes, Janet Wilson, that's what you do. You robots and AI and all of that because you just don't have the manpower, the humans, to do the work anymore. You don't. And um, what time of year to get the attention of this crisis that is plaguing the airline industry, the transportation industry, and Gainer, you hire me. Um, good morning, Susan B. Honey. So the holiday meltdown right here. This is a perfect time to get people's attention. But did it get all your all's attention? Was the whole world watching it? Because it seems like it was in the headlines. Is what it seems like it was. Disruption like we've never seen. What is calling it, you all? Now we got 62. Um, look, Southwest Airlines mel holiday meltdown will hit certainly hit its fourth quarter results. That's right. Adrian, yes. So let me look at this. What's causing this meltdown, you all? Let's see if we can get over here. Let me, I'm going to put it right here because I don't know what's going to hop up. Let's go look at it. Wait, let me, let me, let me put it back to me. I've got to pause this video because now I've got to enable the audio on this OBS because I turn off the audio. Um, I'm going to enable it so you can hear the the meltdown crises um, that is happening. I hope you can. Let me see. I've got to make sure I've got this tuned up, turned up so you can hear it. Um, let's come over here and listen to it. Um, I've got it turned off. Let's see what they're going to say. Just the screen. <laughs> we do begin with a major meltdown at Southwest Airlines. Holiday travelers still stranded across the U.S., many unable to get flights for days. And already this morning, the airline has canceled more than half of today's flights. This as federal regulators are stepping in to investigate. And in a moment, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg will be joining us live. But first, let's go to Alex Perez at Midway Airport in Chicago. Alex, good morning to you. <laughs> we do begin with a major meltdown at Southwest Airlines. Holiday travelers still stranded across the U.S., many unable to get flights for days. And already this morning, the airline has canceled more than half of today's flights. This as federal regulators are stepping in to investigate. We do begin with a major meltdown at Southwest Airlines. Well, it looks like they've got a major thing where the video will not play more than seven seconds. Isn't that about right? Seven seconds. That's about right. So that's what they say this. So let's look at this shoe off. A massive storm has blanketed much of the U.S. with snow, air traveling, and thousands, tens of thousands. You all, they had tens of thousands of cancellations right here. Not just due to Southwest, but this massive storm that blanketed much of the U.S. Slowing it down. The holiday mount down at Southwest Airlines, however, has far eclipsed its competitors, you all. So, uh, Wednesday night afternoon, 2,500 flights, 62%. By contrast, as of Wednesday, they canceled 11 flights scheduled, uh, 23. Uh, Brian Pitts, let's see, so um, that's what they did. This is a level of disruption that we have never seen in this country before. Um, says Ross Feinstein, industry veteran and former director of operation communication at American Airlines. The numbers are staggering. Staggering, you all. Totally. Here's what's causing the meltdown. So we want to hear what's causing this meltdown. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't mean to laugh, but it's, um, yeah. Look at that. That That is absolutely 
horrible and people who who has to pay the price the people the human beings pay the price a unique flight scheduling model okay so they got all this American Airlines largest carrier in the country lawmakers bash Southwest over their cancellations overwhelmed internal management system okay now we're getting to the heat of it now we're getting to um, we're kind of getting closer to their reason that's what we're kind of getting to in addition to its complicated model for assigning flights Southwest also suffers from an antiquated internal system used for managing and staffing those trips company officials union leaders said they've had IT related issues in terms of tracking their crews and scheduling issues with what they used to monitor aircraft locations crew flight attendants all the above you all they got an antiquated antiquated internal system well you know what they mean they they need an upgrade they need an upgrade is what they need <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious. We all know that the company has had its head buried in the sand when it comes to operational processes and IT. We aren't undermanned. We are undermanaged. Part of what we're suffering is a lack of tools. We've talked an awful lot about modernizing the operation and the need to do that, you all. You have zero what is this thing? 16-hour um, workdays. Look, this mismanagement has forced the ground workers to compete to complete 16 and 18-hour workdays over this holiday season, exposing them to the bitter cold, the sickness, and even frostbite, um, which represents ground workers at Southwest Airlines. So the airline needs to do more to protect its ground crews. The lack of of adequate staffing has extended the company's call centers it has extended to the company's call centers where customers face long wait times over two hours on the phone and then some as they seek an alternative flight or a reimbursement in a, in an interview with the transportation secretary um, they said that they're unable to get anybody on the phone to help them and the inability to fully track of where their own flights are going you all here's what you're going to look for ahead um, it said it's going to have a, a domino effect when they do it they have domino effects okay you got the domino effect the initial cancellations create a domino effect in which the company struggles to rebook delayed passengers it has become a nightmare a total nightmare cancellation of flights that aren't canceled other airlines rental cars buses and trains so I hope that you weren't one of those who had to go through that was you all one of those on your way home it's all good that's right it's all good you got Gina on your way home it's perfect it really is look at this you all I don't recall with the chaos still ongoing Southwest Airlines has already reached an unprecedented level of disruption I don't recall seeing any other individual airlines have such extensive problems as Southwest is having now. So that's what they said. So let's go here. Now we know that they got all of that, you all, and they're just at a they're just wondering what is causing it. Um, they want to return to normal. Um, they refund. They promise refunds. How where are they going to get the money? Are they going to get bailed out? Remember during the Bush days, they bailed out in they bailed out all these things. They bailed out so many companies who did not really need to be bailed out. They just stuffed their pockets is what they did. Um, so yeah, we got that going on. Um, this is <laughs> I'm not going to open my mouth, you all. I really am not. I'm not going to open it. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. So. So you have to ask yourself if there's a lack of people, which there is a lack of people, you all. 
We know that the airlines, they have autopilots, even the military aircraft. My husband was telling me this morning when he was in the military, you know, he goes, well, they have autopilot. All the military planes have autopilot, but they don't use them because they didn't trust them back then, the autopilot. And they said, you know, if you're, if the autopilot, if the computers go down, you're, you're, you're just going to crash. The plane ain't even going to operate. And the, the pilots in these commercial airplanes, they put their plane on auto, autopilot too, and they go to sleep. They do it, you all. Autopilot. But then you have to ask yourself, how long has autopilot been in operation? That's what you have to ask yourself. How long has autopilot the history of autopilot, the origin of autopilot. Let's look, let's, I want to go back to, um, we can go weather mighty. The history of autopilot and how it got its start in the military. You can see this is an updated article. You can see the control panel of the airplane. The autopilot flight control unit of an Airbus 340 right here. Um, pilots today rely on automated technology for even the most simple of tasks. It's part of the flying culture. It's no different than using cruise control, setting up automatic email replies, or sending calls to your voicemail. You all was talking about we're living in a world of automation where AI does it for us. You know that's what we're living. Everything is, even this YouTube, it's got automated Google moderators that moderate the moderators. They do. They moderate the channels. They control the comments. They control the flow of traffic. It's all automated. So this is the culture that we live in. These automated features are so second nature that we often just forget how important they have become. So as we all know, it hasn't always been this way. There was a time before autopilot. You all, this sounds like so far back in history. There was a time before autopilot came into existence and the pilots were forced to tend to each device while in flight. And it's not difficult to believe that this process was impractical and tiresome. So this is very hard for the pilots, you all. Fly in an airplane, it's very difficult and it's very tiresome. Um, that's right. Great morning, uh, Izzy. Um, so not only were pilots expected to mentally stay on high alert. Now, let's face it, you know, the pilots, when they go on to cruise autopilots uh, some of them have been caught sleeping on the job while the airplane while the autopilot is doing their job they're sleeping on the job um, they wake up in they're awake when they take off and they're awake when they go to sleep you all they they when they go to sleep well when they land they are supposed to be awake when they land also so you're awake you're fully awake when you take off with all those passengers in your plane you're fully awake when you land that plane with those passengers and you sleep during the autopilot if you're on a big long flight okay so look at this you all so not only were the pilots expected to mentally stay on high alert they had to switch between the levers the dials etc that may or may not have been in close approximation to one another. They say, remember, this was also before the cockpit features like seats and more were adjustable. So the pilots often had to strain to reach their cockpit. You, If you're just tuning in, what is causing all this, this catastrophe, this uh, historical meltdown, cancellation of flights at Southwest Airlines they're saying it's uh, it's due to antiquated uh, systems they need an upgrade they need a DNA upgrade the airplane does it's right and AI is just the one for that it really is so that is until the introduction of autopilot let's see Plane manufacturer Sperry Corporation saw an opportunity to help automate certain features. In 1912, they rolled out a, gyros a gyroscopic heading indicator that could hydraulically operate levers and the rudder. In other words, it would help keep the plane straight and on a level course without the pilot's efforts. 
This was not meant to replace the pilot, but to free up their efforts to focus on other things like mapping and weather changes. Look, this wasn't meant to replace the pilot. This was 1912. Right now, the they can't. They can replace the pilot when they go to autopilot because you can just lay there and sleep or sit there. Okay, let's see this. That's what it looked like. It looked like a little circle and stuff. The Spirium Horizon. Spiri's Corporation. Spiri's Corporation gyroscope from the early 1900s. The feature was introduced in Paris. This ain't going to be too long, you all. we got to read this background really fast. The feature was introduced in Paris at an aviation safety contest in 1914. However, the start of World War I late that year put a halt to their release of that technology. Um, but it didn't stop them from further developments as Sperry Corporation continued its autopilot efforts. By 1930s, they were working with both the U.S. and British armies with autopilot features. An updated version of the heading indicator was used on a U.S. plane, keeping it in proper flight for three hours, you all. So you, could you imagine? Three hours. You all thought I was joking when I typed 1912, AZ Angel. Yes, that's right. Um, so, uh, in fact... In fact, you all, it would keep them in flight for three hours. Meanwhile, the Royal Aircraft Establishment worked on the pilot's assister, which helped move flight controls via a pneumatically spun gyroscope. In fact, the nickname George for autopilot as in I'm going to let George take over for a while was a common saying among pilots is said to be in reference to King George, who headed the Royal Air Force at the time that this was introduced. Look at that. So this is what it looks like. Various U.S. military, various military forces worked together, including the Air Force, U.S. Air Force, to further advance the capabilities with control algorithms. So we got control algorithms um, way back then. Okay. How long has that algorithm been in existence, you all? You have to ask yourself, who or where did the algorithm come from? Where did it come from, really? Um, hydraulics and auto throttle radio navigation age, which made the flight possible through the bad weather. In 1947, you all, there we go. There's the Roswell number right there, 1947. A U.S. Air Force C-53 conducted a successful transatlantic flight where the plane was on autopilot, including its takeoff and landing. So just think about that. 1947, it was that, um, that it was that equipped. It was that um, perfect, perfect enough to do that very thing take off and land in essence what was the pilot's reason what was the pilot there just to watch 1947 it was perfected um, it only got more sophisticated from there today's autopilots can virtually fly without the need for human involvement at all at least in theory so i think that's where we're headed right there Today's autopilots can virtually fly without the need for human involvement at all. Just like driverless cars, fully automated cars that drive you where you need to go. Just like that. Um, however, it's worth noting that it doesn't come standard. In fact, most smaller planes that seat less than 20 don't come with autopilot. This is due to the expense, the general flight times, which are short, and the fact that two pilots would always be on board. Larger planes are mandated to include autopilot, even when multiple pilots are slated to be on the flight. Um, so, so, 
So look at this. So let's do this. Um, 1947 is the first successful transatlantic flight where the plane was on autopilot, including takeoff and landing. And it didn't really need human involvement at all, really, if you think about it. It didn't need it. It didn't need it at all. But what did Mr. Musk say? Mr. Musk said that the military planes would all be intelligently designed, more or less, and without the need of human beings, without, would, would not need pilots, would not need human pilots in the future. He sat there and told that military officer. He did. Look at this. Elon Musk shoots down the pilot's future. Is he right? This is in um, 2020. I'm not going to click into that because you can't look at the Forbes articles unless you're a subscriber. He tells the fighter pilots their era has passed and they will be replaced. Is that not a bold a bold statement. Let's see if we can um, see if he was speaking. He, this is the general he told. Now look at his face. He's got a very solemn look on his face, you all. I think I shared a video of his on my channel like this. Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX, speaks with U.S. Air Force Lieutenant General John Thompson, Commander Space and Missile Systems Center. Commander at Space Pitch Day in San Francisco, California. He um, tells a room full of Air Force pilots the fighter jet era has passed. Um, that's what he said. And when he said it, this, this um, general just sat there and just stared at him. Um, so look at this, you all. Uh, the jet, the fire, the fighter jet era has passed. Um, at the Air Warfare Synopsisium, Synopsisium in Orlando, Florida, drone warfare is where the future will be. Drone warfare. It's not what I want the future to be, says Elon Musk. It's just this is what the future will be. See, he, he is a spokesperson, is what he is. This will be the future. Drone warfare is where, warfare is where the future will be. It's not what I want the future to be. It's just this is what the future will be. Um, yeah, that's why they need people really good in gaming, Danny Skylark. Really, it's true. They got to be excellent in gaming and there's a future. If you're a gamer, there is a future for you in a drone warfare. But don't get too excited right then and there. Okay, don't because the AI can do that also. It can, it can do it without your help. That's how intelligent it is. Don't get too excited with your gaming at all, you all. Uh, look, they got this. F, F, okay. The Joint Strike Fighter Force, there should be a competitor. There's a controversial subject, okay? The competitor should be a drone fighter plane that's remote controlled by a human, but with its maneuvers augmented by autonomy. Okay, that's what they got. Look at this. So we got a, a um, F-35 competitor, should be a drone, um, and it would um, be remote controlled by a human, but with its maneuvers augmented by autonomy. Remember the... Um, video that we did uh you remember that it was um let me do this in de defense let's look at the shoe well. um pentagon press briefing let's go there we'll go to the department of defense you can see it right here we're going to go to the news you're going to go to their videos and um Let's go down here to where they had the CENTCON chief technology officer held a briefing. Is what she did with um, uh, Army Sergeant Mickey Reeves. You all, let's get to the point in here where she did it. Let's see. 
start by having pretty heavy oversight because you've got to make sure, hey, does this autonomous system even work? Is it going to run into other vessels? A company can tell us it's going to be autonomous, but we find out very quickly whether or not it is once it's out in the water. So you Just relying on, on one of your systems that you're you're testing well so that's the beauty of it though is that we're able to ramp it up so you start by having pretty heavy oversight because you've got to make sure hey does this autonomous system even work is it going to run into other vessels a company can tell us it's going to be autonomous but we find out very quickly whether or not it is once it's out in the water so you start with heavier oversight and then you essentially start taking the training wheels off as you go and then you also have to have a conversation about what is the cost of this system? What is the contractual requirement of replacing a broken part or a lost part? And then to make a more precise decision, really, about how you're deploying your manned assets based on the cost and the risk that you can quantify based on those metrics. Sure, let's go to the phone real quick and I'll come back to you. Anyone on the phone have a question? Being in and being able to say, this is a fishing vessel, this is a commercial vessel, this is a military Oh, warship. wait, wait, wait. Um, and so uh, for, for us, it, it's critically important to think of these as a partnership mechanism, almost first and foremost. You'll hear Admiral Cooper from the Navy talking about a 100 USV fleet. That fleet is 80% partnered and 20% US. And that, I, I think, really sums up exactly what the po potential is here, because for the fleet of that size to be useful, all of that has to be, that data has to be integrated. You have to have a shared common operational picture. Um, and, and all of that becomes a really exciting opportunity. Uh, from the Iranian Navy question, that, I mean, that in many ways is the. There's a part in here where they ask would, they're going to use the automated drone, the automatic uh, system, autonomous system in war fighting. And they said, um, is it going to be fully controlled by that? Will there be, will the human get to make the decision? And she was scrambling when we got to that point in the uh, video. She was scrambling about that. Um, she said the algorithm or the auto autonomous system will find a target and they will gather all information and they will let the human being know what they need to do what action they need to take this this is this is this is enormous you all what's happening is totally enormous it's very um oh right here right here right here right here let me think this is one it what the limitations are in specific counter uas systems that the u.s is deploying and how does that uh new intelligence about strengths or weaknesses of one system over another get uh, transferred up to become useful? So, I mean, I've been having those exact conversations with the counter UAS teams in the building this week. The effectiveness is lower or higher than we expected because... Uh, fixing the counter UAS problem B. Sir, that collects everything. Uh, the interim platform agnostic. Wonderful about... So, last question in the room. Yes, ma'am. Can you talk about um, how this software fits into the concept of the Middle East? I'm not going to read any more on that. You can watch that video on this channel. Everything's going AI. That's, that's the whole point. Everything is going AI. You don't need a human, as Mr. Musk said. Elon Musk tells a room full of pilots the fighter era has passed. And he said, um, what did he say? Um, drone warfare. It's not what I want the future to be. It's just this is what it will be. How do you know? How does he know? Do you all think that he is like AI or something like that, you all? Elon Musk is kind of like an AI person. Well, he also said, Mr. Musk also, also said that in another thing. Mr. Musk, Mr. Musk said um, humans will be replaced with robots. You can see it right here. He, he wants Telsa to build a robot to replace the human workers. Okay, and he, he really does. He plans to sell humanoid, humanoid robots to replace human workers. He's got his Optimus humanoid robot right here. The machines that could one day replace human workers. 
Um, he aims, this is, this is really true, he aims to end employment as we know it with a robot humanoid. So we don't need, let me get this thing off of here. I guess I can't look at that. No, it's a Forbes article. I should have known better. We don't need Southwest pilots. You don't need pilots. This is what it's all about. You don't need the pilots. Um, because you can't depend on the humans. The humans are calling in sick, they said. This is according to them. The humans are calling in sick. It's affecting the ground crews. We have an antiquated system, uh, is what they're saying. We have an antiquated system. Uh, we have problem managing and stuff. AI will fix all of that. AI is going to replace so many jobs. And it already is. Instead of, outsource, instead of outsourcing to overseas, you'll have an algorithm, a computer, an AI, who can do it all. And you won't need the humans. This is really what it's about. You will not need the humans, you all. Look, look at this. Here's what they want to say. Will Elon Musk Tesla bot replace human workers? Don't bet on it. See, they want to think um, this is what the robots can do. They will not complain. Robots will not complain about long hours or in-person work, toxic chemical exposure, high injury rates. They won't be tired. They won't call in sick. They won't do any of that, you all. That's his robot right there. Um, it's a Tesla bot. Um, he's bullish. Um, it will be friendly. It will not be a Terminator, he said. You will not get a Terminator war uh, a robot. Five foot eight, 125 pounds, a capacity of 45. Utilizing, look, they will utilize the same autonomous driving systems as the company's vehicles. The robots, he said, will eventually be capable of such tasks as going to the store to purchase a seat a set list of groceries. Um, in the future, physical work will be a choice. If you want to do it, you can, but you will not need to do it. They'll have the robot do it. If you're currently hiring people to do physical work, you will not need to do that either in the future. So you all who work at factories and stuff like that, you do physical works, um, the robots are going to replace you. It really is. Technology and stuff too. These, they don't need them to even fly the airplanes. Look, in theory, if we had a humanoid robot that could be do basically anything a person could do, that would have a dramatic impact on employment. A futuristic and author of the rule of the robots, how artificial intelligence will transform everything. He thinks this. We're very far away from that. I don't think so. I really don't think so. Look at this. Something about an Al Laden robot powered factory alien dreadnought. What is this, you all? An alien dreadnought. Um, the auto industry is already being robots. They're doing the work. A robot can move around like a human. Hand eye coordination. Um. So they will, um, look, look, look at this. One clear advantage, you all. One clear av advantage robots have over humans from a business owner standpoint if they, is they will not complain about long hours or in-person work. They won't complain about toxic chemical exposure, high injury rates, and there will not be any open racism or any adverse workplace conditions. And that certainly they don't form unions to agitate for better ones. Look at that. They don't form unions to agitate for better ones. Musk and Tesla have a contentious relationship with organized labor. This is all... Um, this is all wild, you all. With you looking at the Southwest Airlines and this, it's all, it really truly is all by design. Um, return of the King with the, um, all of that. You'll treat it nice, you all. So, Mr. Musk, oh, he, well, let me see. 
He was saying this is where also this is where the Musk says we will need a universal basic pay. Universal basic pay and you will see it. Basic pay because the humans won't have a job because AI and robots will take over. Robots or AI will replace human jobs. So robots will push us to a universal basic income. And um, that's you're going to see that in your future. You will. You'll see that in your future because um, look, Silicon Valley, Valley argues that nations would have to provide a guaranteed income to their citizens as more and more jobs become replaced by emerging technology. We need universal basic income. Robots will take over. He said this during a meeting in the Middle East is what he said. Look, he said the rise of the robots, the rise of the robots, you all. There, here's Mr. Musk. We need it. We need the universal. Because in the future, physical work will be a choice. If you're around, if you're still alive by then, you all. This really is what it is. If you're alive by then, you might get a universal basic income. Um, is what you might. You have, will be guaranteed. But what will the future look like? Physical work. This is why long term there will be a need for it. Uh, the robot will be friendly. They got mobile apps. Crackle Barrel has a mobile app that lets customers pay for its meal. McDonald's is testing automated drive through ordering at 10 Chicago locations. Dave and Buster is expanding contactless ordering. It's all by design, you all. The um, getting rid of many restaurant jobs that humans did. Um, is what it will do. Some cities have piloted the. Oh, did you know that, you all? Some cities have already started testing out pilot universal basic income programs for targeted groups of residents. And California recently launched the nation's largest statewide one. I think we've launched it too. Right here. This is a part of it too. Listen to this. This was part of. I think that was testing ground. What would like like what would the people do? What would you do um, if you no longer had a job? What would you do with the money that you're given? Because they gave people money. They did, and a lot of people blew that money. A lot of people used the money on things that they needed because they didn't they didn't go to work or something. For I think that was testing ground. Look at that. After the pandemic spurred Congress to approve three stimulus checks for Americans. And some Democrats called to continue those checks well beyond the end. And in late March, amid infrastructure negotiation, 21 Democratic senators urged Mr. Biden, President Joe Biden, to include reoccurring direct payments in his infrastructure plan, saying that when checks ran out after the CARES Act, poverty rose. So... Look at that. Even with concern, rising automation will take people's jobs. Noah Smith wrote that it could optimize job growth and give people who were taking orders and busing tables, um, they could develop more valuable skills. I don't, I don't agree with that unless you are a master technology person, unless you are so skilled in technology. Um, I don't see it happen unless your job is not, um, if you are irreplaceable otherwise you ain't so you all believe this was all and I'm not um, a conspiracy theorist at all I'm not um, I can see the writing on the wall I can see what happened you can see what happened they had to cancel all these airlines because the pilots well they just couldn't depend on them they didn't they didn't have enough human beings they didn't and um, I think it can be tied back to 1947 I do uh, it's like everything started happening um, after that Roswell, after Admiral Byrd in the center of the earth, meeting with the um, leader of the Middle Earth, more or less. And um, 
Then you got Israel becomes a nation. You got the Dead Sea Scrolls are automatically, when they find the Dead Sea Scrolls, you got all kinds of things that happened. Everything started going boom. Then we had a world war again, too. Um, good morning. So you all, Southwest Airlines, um, and they don't got the pilots to do the jobs. That's what they said. You, d they don't ha you can't depend on the pilots. And the managing of the systems is really too complicated, more or less. Uh, the systems are too antiqui antiquated. They need, a, they need a facelift. They need um, some new DNA into their systems, all their systems. And the algorithms, really, that's where the crypto market comes in, too, because it's based off algorithms. All these new apps and stuff. All of these are based off algorithms. The crypto crypto industry too, um, it's based off algorithms too. You know, sometimes when you go to store and you purchase something, and you have to wait and wait and wait for that purchase to go through your banking system. Well, with algorithms, with algorithms or blockchain, blockchain, blockchain technology. Oh, it's super fast, just like boom, just like that, super fast. This is, you're going to see a lot of changes, but you better be ready for them because with that change, you're going to have to adapt to a totally different life and you probably will lose your jobs. Certain jobs are going bye-bye and we know it, you all. And um, what can you do about it? Nothing. You can't stop it. You cannot stop what's been put into motion. It's all tied together. Um, it is. You better live your life. That's the best thing you can do. Um, live your life to the best of your ability. Enjoy it. Don't don't stress out. Because things have happened that are way beyond any human being's control at this point. It's way beyond my control. It's way beyond your control. We are this big. It's about this big. Smaller than a little pea ant, more or less, compared to what's happening in this world. This is how much um, power you got on a global scale like this. Uh, to make any changes because once this it's it's already rolling it's all tied together you got that the different uh, the silent takeover of humanity um, humanity is being invaded it's not done yet it's not come into full fruition we're evolving the whole world is evolving this way to look at it evolving through technology and uh, what the advancement of technology has created and that includes other life forms that's what it includes other life forms and uh, one day humans are going to be old news this human body <laughs> that I'm in and you're in it's going to be old news compared to the new bodies that are going to be around they won't only be new looking on the outside. Um, they'll be new on the inside. They'll even look completely human. Totally like human, but much more superior in intelligence. Uh, extremely more intelligent than any human being. How could you complete? How could you can compete with something like that? You can't. You really can't. Um, it's just, this is just uh, heads up. This is right here in your face. All of it's happening. And um, you may one day be getting on an airplane, a great big passenger airplane. You may go to an airport. There may not be any human beings there at all. Maybe robots or something. And the plane itself will be controlled by a robot. You will, yeah. I love it if you are around at that time, fully automated, and um, they'll have control over everything. You better treat them right, or are you going to be out of here? That's right. That's right, you all. Um, yeah, you've had it with the system. Well, the system's got us all in their, in their system. <laughs> they do everything about it. I am going to go. I'm going to go, you all. I've done said too much. I really have said too much. Uh, stuff that I should not have said. But time is running out. It's 
really running out fast um, to get any type of information out but it's okay it's all right um, so um, with that being said hello wherever you are in any part of the world hello from my heart to yours love you have a wonderful rest of your day and if your eyes are open and you're able to discern and look around and put the pieces of the puzzle together and you can connect the dots you can see it's like the connect the dots you start taking your pencil and go to the dot to the dot to the dot to the dot and then boom when you're done you have one big picture then you can see the picture but you ain't got through connecting the dots because all the dots haven't been put out there for us to finish the picture um, Love you.